Hi! Oh my god, okay, so I can't believe I'm saying this. The day is December 3rd. It's a Sunday. It's 12.40 p.m. In a few hours at 10.30 p.m. tonight, I am going to be flying to Asia. I'm going to Asia for the first time ever. I'm going overseas for the first time ever. It doesn't feel real yet. I'm so excited. I'm nervous. I'm nervous for the long flight. I just, so many things. Okay, before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna get into everything in this video. I thought I would sit down and chat with you guys and just share a few life updates because it's been a hot minute. I know I have a small but a uh, slowly growing community of people so i wanted to give you guys a little update on what's been happening in my life if you're new here my name's shawnee i live in la i'm an actor and a barista and a content creator welcome to my channel i haven't started packing at all but it's okay so i have a list on my phone of everything i want to pack and then i have all of my clean clothes and clean laundry and i have everything so i just need to actually put things in their designated bags which we will do later in this video the first update i wanted to share is i turned 30 saying that sounds crazy to me still uh, i'm 30 guys i'm in my 30s now i don't know how but somehow i am yeah so my birthday was on november 15th i had a lot of just overwhelming thoughts which i think is really normal but i had a lot of overwhelming thoughts a lot of anxiety a lot of like existentialism and like existential crisis types of feelings come up for me in the weeks and days leading up to my birthday and then like during my birthday week it was just there were some moments that were pretty rough for me <laughs> in terms of all of that and just everything that came up for me around turning 30 and the idea of hitting this huge milestone birthday and the idea of getting older and just thinking about the future and it just all became a lot and it really overwhelmed me and it was rough. It wasn't a great week for my mental health, to be honest. I have a really, really great and supportive partner who is just always so supportive and there for me whenever I'm going through anything, which is just really great. So yeah, after like sharing that, I wanna share some of the positives. My birthday week was really fun. The night before my birthday, my girlfriend Owen took me out to dinner at Perch. It's a rooftop restaurant, it's French. It was so lovely. So then on the Friday after my birthday, oh my God, you guys, this is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. My partner is a professional chef. She has a restaurant, but she put together this whole dinner for me with a menu, cute menu and everything. She cooked it all. We had the dreamiest table set up. We rented a house for the dinner and it was just so, so nice. Like I felt so loved. I felt so like overwhelmingly loved and just like, I can't believe someone did all of this for me. This is my birthday dinner outfit. Yeah, so like I said, we rented a house for my birthday weekend. On the Saturday, we hosted a little house party and it was early 2000s themed. So it's the day of my party. Last night was the dinner. The party theme is early 2000s, so we're gonna spend the day like setting up and everything. But right now, me and my friend Claire just went to get coffee. She's staying at the Airbnb, so it's been a fun like sleepover vibe. But we went to get coffee and breakfast burritos and we're kind of just chilling watching the Kardashians right now. Claire looks so cozy. <laughs> We got our, our pink coffees, <laughs> watching the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah, so it was a house party and then a club night. So people came over for the house party and then later in the night we went out to this place called High Tide in the Arts District and they just happened to be having an early 2000s themed like dance night. <laughs> Like I said, it's just been bringing up difficult emotions for me. This year, I've already been struggling with different aspects of my mental health. Um, and I did want to talk about mental health in this video because I wanted to share with you guys that I started antidepressants, which is the next update. I've always talked about 
mental health really openly and honestly on this channel. A big focus of it was me talking about my social anxiety and I have a series called Social Anxiety Confessions. And so I wanted to share with you guys that I am now on a medication journey again. Okay, so my most popular video on this channel is called my Prozac experience. This is my Prozac. eight years or something since I posted that video. So the medication I'm on is Prozac. Um, I've been on it before, but it's been quite a few years since I've been on it at this point. Last time I was on it, it was mainly for social anxiety. It helped me a lot with my social anxiety back then. Years before that, I was on it for clinical depression. I felt over the past few years that my social anxiety and my depression weren't a problem for me anymore. For quite a while, I felt that I was doing pretty well, came off my medication, was living life, just felt pretty good about my mental health for the most part. But then more recently, I'd say about a year ago and maybe a little bit more, I started struggling again with anxiety, depression, and something else that I don't feel comfortable sharing about, but I might in the future. We'll see. But I'm on medication for three different reasons. Um, and the medication I'm on, Prozac, happens to help with all three of the things that I'm struggling with. So about a month and a half ago, I started Prozac again, and I'm now on this new medication journey. Medication is not the right move for everyone, but it was the right move for me. For a long time, like over the past year when I was struggling, I tried to just like be okay without medication, but there were so many times when I was like, I think I need to get on medication again. And I definitely waited until, I waited as long as I could to make that decision. Again, it's not for everyone, but it was the right decision for me. I'm also in therapy. I think that's really important for me. It's important for me to be in therapy while I'm on medication and to just have multiple things that I'm trying at once to work on my well-being and to just like be okay. And I think that it's just so important to reach out when you need help. We cannot always deal with these things on our own. Like if you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with any any kind of mental health thing, like it's okay to ask for help. And I know that getting help can often be a really challenging journey in itself you know, when it comes to paying for therapy or medication or these mental health services, when it comes to paying for them, when it comes to like finding the right coverage with your insurance, when it comes to all of that, but just starting that like journey towards getting help outside of yourself can just be the best thing. And I think that a lot of people struggle with different things and when we're open and honest about it and we talk about it, then it helps people not feel alone. So that's where I'm at right now. I've been adjusting for about a month and a half to Prozac. There have been ups and downs. I'm still in the adjustment period right now. I'm working with my psychiatrist to still figure out what the right dose is going to be for me. So we're still on that kind of rocky adjustment period. A lot of people say when it comes to medication and specifically antidepressants and things like that, it often can tend to feel worse before it gets better. And so I was prepared for that before I decided to start the medication and it's all just a part of the journey and I'm here for it. Lastly, before I get to packing for my trip, oh my God, I'm so excited if you can't tell. I wanna just share with you guys what's going on, like the itinerary. So my girlfriend, Oen and I are going to Asia. So she's actually from Vietnam originally, but she's lived here most of her life, but she was originally from Vietnam. So she has family there. She's fluent in Vietnamese. She's been kind of helping me a little bit. Vietnamese is such a hard language to learn. So Vietnamese is a tonal language, and so you can't just say a word with the right pronunciation, you have to say it with a specific tone. People say it's one of the hardest languages to learn. That being said, since you know my partner is Vietnamese and a lot of her family speaks Vietnamese, it is something I wanna learn. And I'm in the very beginning stages of learning at this point, but in the long term, I do hope to get better. Yeah, so she's been working with me. She made a little voice note for me um, that I've been using to practice. All I can pretty much say at this point in Vietnamese is hello, thank you, and I'm sorry, and my name is, and guys, that's an accomplishment. Just believe me. I'll speak a little bit for you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna make a fool of myself. So hello to like a person in an older generation would be 
ciao bat and just saying hello not to a specific person would be ciao sorry is xin loi uh thank you is gam on I I'm already I'm already messing that up. One more phrase I know is oh my name is Doi La Shani is my name is Shani. I'm also going to Japan on this trip. I'm only going to Tokyo, but Tokyo is a bucket list dream city for me. So I can't even believe I'm going. It just does not feel real. But I've also been practicing my Japanese, which I started learning in high school. So I'm not learning Japanese from scratch, and it's it's. Been a lot easier to brush up on my Japanese. Our itinerary is we are going to fly to Vietnam tonight on a red eye. It's going to be about 21 hours of travel. Um, we have a layover in Korea. So the first flight is LA to Korea and then that's gonna be the longest flight. And then we have like a three hour layover in Korea. And then we have, I think it's about like a five hour flight to Vietnam. We're going to be spending about three days in Hanoi. And then we're going to be flying to Da Nang. After a couple of days in Da Nang, I'm gonna be flying solo to Tokyo where my sisters, it just worked out that me and my sisters are gonna be visiting Tokyo for the first time at the same time. So my two younger sisters are actually getting there tomorrow and they're gonna have like a whole week there before I get there, but the end of their time there will be the beginning of my time there and we'll have a few days where our trips overlap and then I'll have a couple days alone. Um, I'm gonna be meeting up with a mutual friend that one of my LA friends connected me with who lives in Tokyo. I'm gonna be staying in a hotel in, I think it's called Shinjuku. Um, I researched the different neighborhoods and I picked one that I thought, you know, Kind of fit my vibe and like was close to things i want to see and oh, i'm just so excited i'm gonna be vlogging the whole thing this will be i think the third travel vlog series i've done on this channel yeah i'm really excited to document this whole trip i have to get to packing now but those are kind of the updates that i have for you i'm so excited the next video you see on this channel will be me and on flying to Vietnam. I will admit I'm procrastinating a little bit. Um, I made some ramen. I did get hungry, so I made some ramen and I'm watching Tokyo vlogs while I eat my ramen. Excuse the ice cream truck in the background, if you can hear the song. All right, so here's the starting point for the packing. This is my bag that I'm going to check. It's the bigger one. This is going to be my carry-on and then this is going to be my personal item. I've put just all of my clothes on the bed and now I'm going to have to narrow down outfits and things I actually want to bring. So that's the next task. I'm pretty sure these are the shoes I'm bringing. Walking shoes. I know I need to clean these, but uh, two different boot options, sandal options, cute like dressier going out option, possibly a second one, not sure yet, and then just like sneakers. But I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit all of this, so I might have to narrow it down. All right, it's a bit later. So it looks a little chaotic still, but lots of progress has been made. So my personal item is done, and I'll show you guys what I'm putting in it. So this is the one that can go like under my seat. In my personal item bag, I'm bringing toothpaste, mouthwash, deodorant, floss. We're gonna pick up snacks when we get to the airport to take on the plane. Lotion, wallet, book to read, my laptop, my laptop mouse, headphones, mouse pad, um, an eye mask, a face towel. Me and Owen are gonna be wearing compression socks. She said that might help with like circulation and everything. Hairbrush and comb. Then in this side pocket, I've got earplugs, phone charger, mints, all of my camera batteries and stuff and SD cards for vlogging. And then over here, I've got a lot of my medications that I want to keep on me because they're really important. And then I'm bringing, I'm kind of like anxious about this plane ride. So I'm just trying to really make this easy for me. I'm bringing stress relief tea that I can have on the plane. Also I'm packing for two different climates. So it's going to be a little cold in Tokyo, like 40s to 60s, 40s at night, maybe late 50s during the day. And then in Vietnam, it's gonna be humid and 70s. Also, the problem is I wanna bring too many cute outfits to Tokyo. Um, I cannot bring this many clothes. I really need to narrow this down and I need to do it quickly. I'm, this is taking too long. Listening to Christmas music while I pack. All right, 
right, as you can see, I did it. Um, it's under 50 pounds. They're both packed. I just have to put my flat iron in, but we're good to go. And over here I have my personal item, a little neck pillow, jacket, blanket. I may or may not bring, so I'll have to decide on that. And then the hoodie I'm going to wear on the plane. All right, we have like 30 minutes before we have to call our Uber to the airport. So I'm going to end this video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, miss, I guess I'll be on my way now.